please welcome to the mic, Kate Tellers. <laughs> We meet again. Um, <clears throat> so it's my senior year of high school, and I've just been cast as the romantic lead in the fall production of Fame the Play, based on Fame the Movie. <laughs> it's a huge deal. First of all, I was cut entirely from the freshman year production of Brigadoon. And second of all, uh, my character Doris, uh, the ingenue, has a, a kissing scene. Uh, it turns into a makeout to the music of Glenn Miller's Moonlight Serenade. And I am terrified of my parents sitting in the audience of my high school theater watching me make out on stage, but I am more thrilled because for the first time, and even though it's my 60-year-old theater teacher who wears a red sweater in summer, cable knit, uh, someone is looking at me and looking uh, and seeing me as someone who could be sweetly kissed. There is one catch, though. Um, all of the female roles in this production, because it's high school, are double cast. So on Thursdays and Saturdays, I play Doris, but on Wednesdays and Fridays, Danielle plays Doris. And um, Danielle, like me, is uh, a late bloomer, but unlike me, when Danielle bloomed, she bloomed into like a sparkling orchid. And she has beautiful skin, and she has this glossy, like Cindy Crawford of the Cindy Crawford workout VHS dynasty hair. And she has had boyfriends and held hands with them in the hallway. And she's very aloof. And you feel like she's like someone that makes you feel like you want to read her poetry, like even the early drafts. <laughs> and um, on the weekends, she, ride horse she rides horses. OK, so on the weekends, I pound <laughs> bowls of Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal <laughs> and teach myself the theme song to Cheers on the piano. <laughs> So, Danielle and I are different. <laughs> um, as soon as rehearsals start, I start comparing myself to her. I'm convinced that everyone can tell that I have never had a boyfriend. They've never seen me hold hands with anyone in the hallway. I tell myself that my co-star only wants to kiss her. He never wants me to come and switch out of our scenes. Uh, I, uh, I uh, watch the way that she does her lines. She does them all very quietly and down to the floor. And I'm like, maybe it's because she's more deep than I am or more dramatic. Maybe she's a better actress. And I notice how our costume, we have this pink drop waist dress. And, her, and on her, it's like a little tighter on top and looser on the bottom. And on me, it's the opposite. <laughs> and I feel like a very unattractive pair. Um, but then the greatest thing happens. The greatest thing. It's the night of homecoming, we're at the homecoming after party, and my friends and I have just eaten several boxes of Papa John's pizza. <laughs> and we're sitting around, and we've decided to do a group viewing of The Lion King, the Disney cartoon, as 18-year-olds. And um, as the movie starts, Dan, this guy in the cast, he looks like a young Matt Damon, and he's terribly miscast as this, um, this amazing dancer named Leroy. Um, he stands up right at the beginning and leaves the room. Uh, Mufasa has just died, it's Simba's father, and it clearly brings up a loss for him. <laughs> and so I, because my parents are being divorced, and therefore I'm the only other person in high school who's ever felt pain, um, <laughs> I go to the hallway to talk to him and to, you know, be like deep with him, but also I think his lips are really soft and pillowy, and I love the way his legs jut when he breaks dances. So, um, <laughs> We sit in the hallway, we talk, we stay up all night, we talk forever, and by the next week, we're dating. And by dating, I mean we are making out. We are making out everywhere. We're making out backstage, we're making out at my dad's house while he's out trying to figure out how to date after 25 years, and we're mostly making out in his mother's uh, teal green Ford Taurus station wagon. We take this to all of the elementary schools in our school district at night when they're closed and the parking lots are empty. <laughs> Pretty smart, right? Um, so one night, we're in the back seat of the car, and someone comes banging on the window. And it's a cop. He's shining his flashlight, and he's banging. And he's like, are you consenting? Are you consenting? <laughs> and I roll down the window. I'm like humiliated. I'm like, yes. Yeah. What I really want to say is like, yes, yes, yes. I am so consenting. 
consenting. No one has ever consented more than me in the backseat of this car. I want to like put it in lights. I want to bang cymbals. I want to put it on a t-shirt and have it printed at a kiosk at the mall. I am such a consenter in this moment. It is so great. I go back to school, we practice the curtain call. I'm the last person to come out in the curtain call. I'm the lead in the play. I have a boyfriend. I'm kissing in the play. I'm kissing my boyfriend. I'm kissing all of the time. <clears throat> Except, what I start to notice is that when I'm on stage playing Doris, Dan and Danielle are sort of like in the corner with their heads really close together. And she's always seemed sort of sad, and like I know that he's super deep and can talk about sad things because we like to talk about sad things. And so I get why she's going to him. Like I get why she's choosing him. I also chose him. Um, and I know she can't go to me because I'm too busy being on stage, being the lead in the play. Um, but one night after rehearsal, he sort of hangs back and he says, you know what? Uh, Danielle really wants to talk to me, so I'm just gonna let her, she's just gonna give me a ride home. And I watch them walk to her car, and they close the door, and they don't even start the engine, and they just are like locked, looking at each other. And I know that I could run over to that car totally naked, and they wouldn't even notice. A couple weeks after the show closes, <clears throat> it's right before Christmas, Dan and I are going to go on a holiday date and exchange Christmas presents, and he picks me up in the green tourist station wagon, and he doesn't even pull over before he says that he doesn't want to date anymore. And he doesn't say it's about Danielle, but I know it's about Danielle. Uh, so I take his Christmas present, I got him two things. The first is I made him a mixtape, and on the mixtape I put his favorite song, American Pie by Don McLean, and I just dubbed it over and over and over again on sides A and B, because I knew he liked it a lot. And I also bought him a star and named it after him. I had a certificate for the star I bought for him. And I took those and I threw them at his head. And, um, Hell hath no fury like a teenage thespian uh, who has no <laughs> rehearsal to go to and no boyfriend to tell her aunts about at Christmas. So I'm a super hot mess. I am crying all of the time. I'm laying in my bed, listening to Tori Amos, talking to my cat. Uh, this goes on for a while. It's not a lot of fun when finally my friend calls me and she's like, we are going to go out. And she comes to pick me up. And I think her idea was that she was gonna take me to Eaton Park and just stuff me full of grilled cheese sandwiches until I could like stop crying and maybe fall asleep. Uh, but instead, we make the stupid idea that we're gonna take a detour and we decide to drive past Danielle's house. And as we go up the hill, she lives at the top of a hill. It's there, his car. And I fall apart. Um, and I never, ever get an answer to what was going on there. Dan and Danny, as people called them, never walk through the hall holding hands. I never know if they dated. But by the time spring comes, uh, there's a little bit of silence, and we're all cast in a play together. Um, this play is Alice in Wonderland. And instead of playing the ingenue, I play the mock turtle, which, um, for those of you not familiar, is a depressed turtle who's also part cow. <laughs> so. That was what I played in the play. And our theater teacher, a different teacher, I, I think sensing the tension between me and Danielle decides that we're also allowed to cast our pets. Um, and so I cast my pet, just me and Danielle cast our pets. My pet, a beautiful black long-haired cat who's a very good listener. And Danielle's pet, a um, neurotic spotted pig from her horse stables. And <laughs> We have to keep these animals apart, of course, and that means that Danielle and I have to stay apart, which is good, because it means that nobody gets their eyes scratched out. <laughs> we grow apart, all of us. A few years later, I'm in the Lower East Side uh, in New York City, living in New York City, and I'm racing to see my friend's show, and I run into Dan. And we make some small talk, and it gets kind of quiet, and he reaches into his pocket to grab his cell phone, uh, and his hands are trembling. And he looks at me, and I look at him, and we lock, and there's a moment, but we do not kiss. A minute later, he's on his bike, riding down the street, and I turn around, open the door, and go on to this next show. Thanks, guys.